Hello everybody, welcome back to another video with the Mini Cooper. Okay, what I'm going to be doing in this one is I am going to be replacing the door lock and solenoid. Now, on this particular car, the car won't unlock on this door from the key fob. Um, you, you pull the handle on the inside and it unlocks perfectly fine. Um, however, it does lock, so I'm suspecting that there's a problem with the uh, with the solenoid itself. So I'm going to replace it. Um, I've got a new, well, not a new part, a second-hand part. This cost twenty pounds on eBay from a breaker, um, and he even supplied a warranty with it. So hopefully this will fix our problem. If not, then it's back to the drawing board, and we'll have to figure something out. But um, yeah, hopefully uh, it should be a simple case of just swapping out the solenoids, and uh, away we go. Obviously, what we've got to do is take all the door card off to access the inside of the door. I've done a video on that. I'm not going to go through that here. Uh, if you want to see how to remove the door card then click the link at the top uh, it'll be up there um, and uh, yeah I'll, I'll do a little run through on it and it's pretty straightforward okay let's uh, let's get into it <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, door panel is all off, or the door card, should I say, is all off. And we've now got access to the inside of the door, and we can get to the back of the lock, and uh, all that good stuff. So, what we need to do first is we need to um, have a look here. We've got three bolts. These are T25, and what we'll do, we will crack them off. These will be quite tight. what I'm going to do is just loosen them slightly I'm not going to remove them as yet because what we need to do is we need to take another step before we can actually get the lock assembly out of the car and the reason for that is because the window regulator is affixed into the door between this point and this point. There, it's basically a rod that comes down here. And that rod being there stops us getting that out of the door panel um, because the gap's just not big enough. As you can see, it's quite, a, it's quite a hefty lump. So what we need to do is just remove the two bolts. There's one just behind this plug here. There you go, 10 mil bolt, that one there. And another one, uh, where is it? There, on my finger, right underneath. Right underneath the uh, right underneath the door. Um, again, 10 mil. Remove those two bolts, and the whole of that frame will uh, will be able to be shifted out of the way, allowing us to get this out. Um, what we'll need to do uh, is there's cabling, um, like a, a cable, uh, a wire cable that goes between the two parts of the window regulator, and that's held in with these little clips here. All we do with them is squeeze them, and as you can see. They come out just like so. There's another one there, um, and another one there, and uh, all the cabling and all that sort of good stuff is held into place with these little clips. So be mindful of those. Well, it's just a case of squeezing them together like that and pushing them out. And to get them back in, you just put them back into the hole and they spring open. So what I'll do, I'll get those two bolts out, and then we can move the window regulator out of the way. First bolt underneath, 10 mil. Not overly tight. Rip it all the way out. And there we go, that's the first one. Second one up here. Okay, so now we should be able to move this out of the way. What I'll do, I'll get up here and have a good look inside, make sure nothing's obstructing us. Uh, all 
doors, so we've got the window. We've got the window in it at this end. So what we do need to do is release, release it from the window. So yeah, there is a, there's like a hook, it's hard to describe. And I don't think I'll be able to get the camera in there. In fact, what I'll do, I'll take the camera. We can see the mechanism holding the window. And what we need to do obviously is we need to free that from the bottom of the window in order to move the, um, the whole of this rod across. And at the back there, you can see the, uh, you can see the door lock mechanism that we're actually going to be removing. So yeah, so what we need to do is free it from the window and uh, yeah, we should be able to uh, maneuver it out of the way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a little bit of a fiddle around, figure it out in the head, and then I'll bring it back once I've worked it out. Right then, I figured it out. So what we've got here, we've got like a little wheel and that screws into there like so. Now, this little cup here, the bottom of the window sits in that cup and obviously a cut about two, three inches above this, the bottom of the window, there's a hole in the glass. So we're looking at around about here. There's a hole in the glass that this little wheel fits through. Um, now it was quite tight and obviously that needs to be unscrewed in order to be able to pull the, this side of the regulator away from the glass. Now what I did was with this little breaker, uh, this little um, pry bar, should I say, Got it on there, gave it a few taps with a hammer, and that was enough to free it off. And then I could get my hand in there and turn it off. Now, um, it came out so far, and then there's a bulkhead. I don't know if you can see it here. This one here actually interfered with this coming all the way out from the window. So what I had to do was put the top and bottom bolts back in, uh, in place, and then turn the ignition on and move the switch to get the window to drop. Now, obviously this window is um, playing up on this car as it goes anyway, and I do need to replace the regulator on this, but with a bit of persuasion and a little slight pull down on the window, it did drop enough for me to be able to get that wheel out. So once the wheel's out, took the two bolts back out, and then the whole thing swings out like so, and is no longer causing a problem for us to get the, um, the, uh, the door lock out. So now what we can do is we can move on to actually getting that door lock and solenoid assembly out of the door. Okay, next thing we want to do is um, obviously we want to start getting the, uh, the door lock assembly out of the car. Um, this cable here that goes to the handle is part of that assembly. So this needs to come out with it. And as you can see, it goes into the door handle. So what we need to do is take this off. There's one, two, three screws that hold it in place on the door. And what we'll do is simply pop the screws out. One, two, that one's staying in place. Come on, there you come. Uh, I'll recover it, that one in a minute. Doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna play ball. And there's the last one. Let's catch that screw, there it is. All right. Okay, obviously we've got all the connectors for like there's a little, there's a little puddle light just there, which makes the inside of the door handle glow, as you can see. Um, but the bit we're interested in is obviously this cable here. So all we need to do is pop it off the door. This rubber gasket simply pulls out like so. And then what we need to do is pull the outer of the cable enough to free it from its slot, twist it round so that the, uh, the cable lines up with this opening and then it comes out dead easy. Right, that can be just left like so, it's not going to do any harm like that and then this bit will come out and um, we'll feed it through this, uh, through this hole as we take the door lock out. So what I'll do, I'll take that off, we don't have to mess around uh, feeding that through the hole and just pull the cable up. Okay, next step, what we'll do is um, we will remove the, the door pin assembly from the old lock. Okay, I think what I'll do, um, to make explaining things a little bit easier, I'll actually pull the replacement lock assembly out of the car. 
and we can then look at all the good stuff um, that we're talking about on this one. Now, obviously, here is this cable here, as you can see, even got the grommet on it. This is the electrical connector um, from the factory loom, and um, it's actually going to sit in the car like, like so, as you can see, and here's the three bolt holes that match up with these three here. Now, on this side, what we've got here, we've got this here, which is what this actually fits into. So all it is is a bent piece of wire that comes down, comes across here, goes down, and then into this, and it's held in place by these, these this green plastic. It's basically like a clip. So what I need to do is reach inside and simply pull it off. And that's all I've done. All I've done is I've pulled it off, and that will now come off. So basically what I've done is this, just simply popped it off, just like that. It really is that easy. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's what your door pin is acted upon as and when you see it going up and down. So next thing we need to do is obviously get the door lock out of the car. Now, there are, um, there is a electrical connection, as I said at the bottom. So what I'll do, I'll disconnect that now. And if I undo that, there it is. That is the one I've just disconnected. So I'll, I'll leave that hanging out for the moment so it's not in the way at all. And then I think we're actually there. All we need to do now, um, having a quick feel around with my hand, I can't feel anything else that's going to interfere with with what we're trying to achieve here. I'll just get my torch and have a quick and gander up inside. Uh, oh, actually there is. So obviously um, you've got the door lock on the, uh, on the door handle itself. And what that acts upon is this here. There's a, um, there's a little cable, a little Bowden cable um, that comes down to it. So if I take the camera and have a look up inside you can see where the cable comes down to that point there basically i just need to disconnect that and uh that is the last thing that goes up to the actual handle itself um so yeah i'll disconnect that one from the bottom there it's dead easy and then um we uh we should be back to uh, a point where we can actually physically remove the lock from the car Okay, <clears throat> so I've disconnected the cable. Basically, the cable comes down from the handle um, and, the, and the actual manual lock itself. And what we're doing is um, the outer of the cable sits in this little pocket here and the bottom of the cable goes via a ferrule into that. And as you activate it, basically the two are pulled together like so. And that's how you get your action. So that has now been removed. What we need to do now is simply remove all three the screws on the outside one that's two and then what I'll do I'll get my hand inside and then we'll remove the last one And obviously this is the point where I find out if I've actually missed anything because the door lock won't move. So there's three. Okay, let's see if I can get it out. Obviously all the little sticky out bits want to hook on everything. And there we are, that is the lot removed. Now, one thing that is interesting um, is that <clears throat> on the replacement one, when I go up and down, it actually engages on its little ratchet and stays in the position that it's supposed to stay. On the old one, 
it doesn't. So I think I found the problem um, and the reason why the door won't actually unlock um, from the remote because it's just not doing what it's supposed to do. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's clearly a problem with it. So um, hopefully we'll, um, we'll, we will actually um, achieve the aim of um, fixing this fault. So well, obviously what we need to do now is we need to fit the new one in. And obviously that's gonna be uh, a case of re um, refitting is the reverse of removal as that good old Haynes manual would say. Um, but we're not gonna do that. We're not, we're not just gonna um, skip over all of that stuff. We're actually gonna fit it in. Um, and uh, yeah, um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll fix this issue. So yeah, next we'll get the new one in. All right then. So we are now at the stage where we can fit the replacement part. So obviously what I need to do is just feed it up. Things like this cable here have to go out through there. If I clip that into there, like that, it'll stop it whipping me in the face. And then obviously I need to just offer it up into its position and one thing I do need to be mindful of is the cable that came down from the door handle is this one. I need to make sure that that is not trapped behind it. And there we go. So, obviously what we need to do, get the bolts aligned and get them fitted. Like so. There's one. Two. And three. So, now what we can do, now we've got it in position, is I can go around and refill the little cables into uh, the places they're supposed to be. Obviously, this one's going to go into the door handle there. That little one that um, obviously is quite hard to show you on camera, I just need to fit that. So what I'll do, I'll fit that and then we'll come to getting this one connected up next. Okay, so I've got that little cable connected and it is a bit fiddly because you can't really get your head and your hand in there to be able to see what you're doing. So you're kind of having to do it by feel, but it, it went in eventually. Obviously, the next thing I need to do is connect this cable up to here. But before we do, we need to remember to fit the grommet because if you forget the grommet, obviously you'll have to take it all off again to to uh, to fit it. You don't want to miss it because obviously it does form a vapor barrier. Uh, obviously, you get a bit of spanner rash doing these kind of things. Okay, so in order to fit this, reverse of before, just simply get it in to its little slot like so, turn it around, give it a little tug, and there we are. Just like so. Right then, what we need to do next is simply screw it into position. That little peg there goes into that hole. So just navigate it into place and there we go. Get the first screw in to hold it into place. And there we are. And the next one. And then the last one. Oops, I'll drop it on the floor. This one's a bit of a, this one's gonna be a bit of a pain to get into its hole. Be better off if I had a magnetic one, which I do actually have, so I might have to revert to that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go and grab my magnetic screwdriver, just get that one in because it's just not gonna line up with where I want it to be. Be right back. There we go. Yeah, that one's a bit of a pain because it's quite a big opening and the hole is right in the center of it. And unless you've got a magnetic screwdriver, it can be a bit of a pain to get it into the place you want it to go. So next, obviously we just want to 
pop our grommet back into its position. Make sure she's properly seated. Give a little tug on the inside. There we are, just make sure it's all sitting properly, just like so. And then, all we need to do is clip it back into place. And there we are. Right then, next step, we'll feed this round and clip her onto a little green, the little green clip that I showed you a moment ago. Make sure we get it in the right place. There we go. And that is that. And again, oh, no, it didn't pop in. It popped out. Back in there. There we go. That's it. Now we've got it. And again, let's get the grommet back in. And there we are. Sorted. There we go. Okay, next step I reckon is to get the electrical connections remade. The socket, the plug itself will only go on one way. Now, as you can hear, the motor on the uh, on the window is uh, trying to operate the, uh, the make the window do its droppy thing because obviously it's a pillarless door. Can you hear that? Don't know if you did or not. Hopefully you could. Yeah, obviously because it's pillarless doors, the window's supposed to drop on like on a, or like it does on any coupe. And as I made the electrical connection, it recognised that the window was open. Uh, the, sorry, the door was open and did exactly what it's supposed to do. So that's that done. That is connected. Let me just have a quick double check on everything inside. Okay, I think everything everything looks good. What I'm gonna do, just move that out of the way a bit. Yeah, okay. Right, next thing, I'm gonna tighten up these three screws. Get these tightened. with the lock we want to make sure that the alignment is going to be right um, when we uh, when we come to show the door but we can we, we can tweak that later it'll only be a case of loosening these bolts giving it a little nudge and then retightening them but yeah I don't uh, I don't anticipate having any major issues with that okay next what we need to do is obviously get the window regulator all back in um, uh, and uh, connected to the window and the door. So this is obviously just going to be a case of popping her back in to its position, making sure that it engages on the bottom of the window. This cable here just go in and tucks out slightly and is interfering where the, uh, where the rail is going to be. So what I'm doing, I'm just giving it a little pull here and that's moving it out of the way and then feeding the regulator back up to where it needs to be and as you can see obviously it's back on the window because I'm able to push the window up so get the bottom back in the correct location and over its bolt hole and then likewise just here you can see that's also got to be in the right place. Get that bolt lined up. The top one is the shorter of the two. Oops. And the bottom one is 
this one with a little washer on and as you can see it's a longer bolt so we'll get the top one in first just give a little wiggle to line it up just like so and then the bottom one Feeling it at the moment, where are we? There we go. And then we can take our ratchet and tie them up. Same at the top. Okay, so what we did have before was the cable here was in there like so, and that keeps it out of the way of everything. It keeps it tucked out of the way, out of the track of the window, because obviously you don't want the window to interfere with any of the cables, any of the wiring, any of these cables here. Um, so yeah. Next, what we need to do is obviously I need to refit this wheel to lock the window onto the regulator. So I'll get that done. I can't really film it because there's just not enough room. So I'll get that done, and then I'll bring you in once I've uh, once I've got it re re uh, re tightened. Okay, so I've got that little that little wheel uh, engaged in the bottom of the window. Everything's all where it should be. Um, now, before I before I go and put the door card back on uh, and wrap this job up, obviously what I need to do is make sure it works. Um, obviously, the handle's working because I can hear it. Um, effect in the mechanism so uh, we'll be we should be good there uh, but obviously what I will do uh, at some point providing that uh, it does lock and unlock off the fob is make sure that pulling the handle does um, you know really in fact what I can actually do I can actually engage the lock there that is the lock as it would be with the door closed and the handle is working so there we go we know, we know that that's working so as I said, before we put the door card on, what we do need to do is just make sure that what we've done is going to work. So the exterior handle operates. Here is the key. Now it's locked. I could see the um, I did see the, uh, the the door pin drop. So I know it's locked and obviously I can't unlock it from the outside. Now this is the uh, this is going to be the test because this is the bit that didn't work. Looks promising, the door pin did move. Hey, there we go. So, we fixed the problem. Obviously if you do have this issue where the, the, uh, the door won't unlock or possibly even lock off the key, it could be a fault with the, uh, the door lock and solenoid assembly in the uh, in the door itself so yeah obviously this was a second hand part it wasn't expensive i think i paid about 20 pounds um a, a brand new one would be significantly more um but you know you get what you pay for if if this fails again in a couple of years time then i'll replace it again um i could probably replace this four or five times for the cost of a brand new part and being my son's car he doesn't have the disposable income that i do to spend on new parts so um obviously the second hand breaker parts are the way to go Anyway, what I'll do, I'll um, get the door panel on and then uh, we'll have a quick catch up at the end. Okay, there we are. As you can see, door completely reassembled. All good. And that fixes work brilliantly. And my son's happy, you know, that he can now unlock both doors from his key fob. Uh, and uh, yeah, away we go. It's always, it's, it's always a bit of a relief when you fit a part uh, to find that it does cure the problem that you had. Um, it's a bit of an annoyance when you, you go to that effort to find that the problem still exists uh, afterwards and then you end up chasing your tail trying to figure out what the issue is. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel because um, there'll be plenty more to come uh, with, the, uh, with this little Mini Cooper. Um, every time I do something, what I'll do is I'll document it uh, and share it with you guys. Um, join us on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram, Kev Shed. 
Um, I'll leave links to all of those uh, in the description below. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you all for the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.